You're about to head out on vacation and that leaves your garden without its number one caretaker, you. So today's video, we're gonna go over exactly how I vacation proof my garden, whether it's containers, in ground or raised beds, and what you can do to help ensure that when you get back, everything's watered, disease, and pest free, and still producing. So when it comes to in ground beds and water, you need to consider things like timers on your sprinkler systems, doing a pre-soak, a really heavy pre-soak. We're talking running that tap for an hour or more right before you leave. And number three, which you're gonna hear quite often, is actually a pre-soak of your mulch. What this would involve is taking a container, filling it up with mulch, and then soaking that mulch overnight, and then putting it on top of your beds. You want to aim for like two to three inches wherever possible. And this will not only be a constant source of moisture going forward, but it also is going to reduce the evaporation of that deep soak you did prior to. When it comes to things like raised beds, you may want to consider the installing of olas, which would have to do be done before things are planted. You can also do the pre-soaked mulch method. And in the event that you know when you're gone, it's going to be incredibly warm, consider shade cloth. And all you're doing is simply reducing the amount of sun and heat that that plant is exposed to temporarily. Nothing will get leggy and it's not going to interfere with the production of flowers or produce, whatever the goal may be. Now, when it comes to your containers, these are probably hands down the easiest ones to deal with, but also the ones that dry out the quickest. So first off, what you wanna do is move them into a shadier space. You want to crowd them together because shockingly enough, the volume of plants pushed together is actually going to increase the humidity in and around that area which will actually reduce the need for water that these plants have. And then you can consider a pop bottle dripper method. So you literally fill up a two liter pop bottle, you flip it upside down into the container, poke some holes in the top, and then that water will slowly work its way into that soil system over time. Usually you need to get the terracotta spikes, but there are some plastic Amazon spikes out there that do work wonderfully. And I do use them actually for my indoor plants because I forget about them all summer. So they have a constant supply using this method. Now, what I like to do is I really like to cheat when it comes to this and it forces my hand in making sure everything is put together in a tight bunch and that there's a constant water source and that it is in shade. And that is the use of a kiddie pool. So what you do is you simply take that kiddie pool, pop all of your containers into the kiddie pool, whether it's raised baskets, or actual pots, all we need to make sure is available is a hole in the bottom of the pot to allow for capillary action to take place. Then you just fill that kiddie pool up. Bonus for anyone who chooses to put fertilizer in that kiddie pool and then fill it up because now you get to fertilize for an entire week. And then all you need to do is ask a neighbor to very simply come over and make sure the kiddie pool is full. If the kiddie pool is full, then your plants are happy and healthy. If you do this and it is hot and sunny when you are gone, you're going to come back to absolutely beautiful containers. I do every single year. When it comes to pests, this is a little bit more difficult. Number one is you want to do a pre-scout. If you can, you want to do a preventative application of a neem or an insecticidal soap. And then if you're worried about things disease-wise, again, you want to do a preventative sweep of either powdered sulfur or milk if you have the powdery mildew is the concern. But ultimately speaking, this one's very difficult to counteract. What I will say is that if you are worried about flighted pests, I would put some row covers over top. Literally, tool from Amazon is more than enough. All you have to do is pop it over top and actually tuck it into the bed. The nice part about this only being temporary, meaning a week or so, is that we don't have to have the big hoops or anything. We can very gently just kind of pop it over top of the crop itself. And it's not going to grow a ton, so it's not like it's going to restrict the growth of the plant, but we don't have to put that heavy-duty infrastructure in place, which will get expensive if you have to do a whole garden. Now, if you're able to provide all these conditions, particularly the water and the sun conditions being ideal, well, then you could result in some overgrowth and or bolting. And both of these are not a good thing. So number one is for the potential of bolting. Well, this is simply when the plant chooses to flower. The way to prevent this would be to do a harvest on the plant. So for example, if it's lettuce, 
do a harvest, bring that to the lake with you for your treats, your good eats, if you will. And this will help to prevent that potential of bolting, but it's by no means a guarantee. The next one is to actually utilize the shade cloth. And this would be the same shade cloth that you would use to help prevent the braid of the transpiration. But in this case, it's going to help reduce the potential of bolting, but by taking off the edge that is the heat. Now for overgrowth, while it doesn't sound like it's a huge issue, and it's not a huge issue unless it's a plant that absolutely needs to be supported, such as a tomato or a pepper or maybe a cucumber or a squash, particularly ones that are kind of falling over the sides of your containers or your raised beds, then you're okay. But if you do need the, oh, there his, his nose is on camera. He's too fat. He's not fit. But essentially what can happen is that if a storm does decide to rip through or high winds, you can end up with breakage because that plant is so darn heavy it's not able to support itself. So number one is doing a full prune on the whole plant and then of course being sure to stake the plant and or trellis or connect it to something that allows it to have that structure and protect it against the potential of damage. These are all tips and tricks that my family as a whole has been using for years upon years, decades upon decades, to be totally honest. My grandma used them, my mom has used them, I have used them, and I can safely say I've never had any issues going away for a week, a week and a half, two weeks. The only issue you may have is some weeds, which are, it's gonna happen. Maybe you'll have some deadheading when you get home. That is fine. But overall, the plant as a whole is going to be just fine. So Geek Crew, what are your vacation tips and tricks for keeping things going and not letting your hard work go to waste? I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.